this meeting. Um, we're connected with um, a number of doctors. I'm going to switch that off. Through mobile phones and clinics. So welcome to everybody. I hope you guys can hear you over there. Um, we're stealing the show for Senla today because Senla is organizing an ENT month and awareness month about everything as ear, nose, throat and Matilda, which is a good thing because we do a lot of ear, nose, throat surgery in the last couple of years. It's really exploded and um, we therefore set up a center of excellence in ear, nose, throat surgery. We send people out for training, new equipment. It's really exciting to see all this happening. It's, it's basically a repeat of what happened with orthopedics 10 years ago, we're now having ENT surgery. So today, um, it's a bit of a workshop type uh, setting, and I'll leave everything for Dr. David Coates who will be introduced to us. We do a lot of screening at Matilda at the uh, Executive Health Centre, and our current screening is EPV screening blood test for nasal pharyngeal cancer which is fraught with false positives. It doesn't matter so much because those patients are being followed up, but actually there are better tests available. So today we'll introduce a better test you might have read about in the newspaper because it's been recently launched at universities. So um, it's very exciting and very exciting to have the representatives of the company doing the test here and you all have a chance to do a bit of hands-on as well. So enjoy the morning. Thank you. Um, so today is going to be quite a simple and brief talk. We're just going to talk about, you know, a little briefly about mesopharyngeal cancer. Um, one of the current tests that we have that we can do to as a screening test. Um, and then, in fact, most of the morning is we're in fact going to demonstrate how it's done. And we actually have a model and actual practice uh, probes for people to try, so people can understand it. It's a very simple uh, thing. You start. Nasopharyngeal cancer, in fact, is a very common cancer for Cantonese, so it's also called Guangdong cancer. So it typically occurs in Cantonese people. Um, in Hong Kong, uh, there's about 900 new cases every year. It used to be over a thousand, and over the last 10 to 15 years, the trend has been coming down slowly. It's uh, last year, I think, uh, with the cancer registry, there's just under 900 cases. I think about 860 something new cases in Hong Kong. Now, why is it so difficult and why do we bother wanting to do a screening test for mesopharyngeal cancer? Because it's really a genetically um, related cancer. If you're Cantonese, then you have a high risk, basically. Now, um, there's been other research done in the past that talked about you know, uh, salted fish intake when you're a childhood that may increase the risk, but in fact, it's probably genetic because they found that it's really the Avenue Fishing Village. Uh, and if you genetically, if you have a relative that has nasopharyngeal cancer, you have a 50% higher chance of getting nasopharyngeal cancer. So it's probably genetically related rather than just having some fish. Now, um, because of the location of the nasal pharynx, which is in the middle of your head, which is in the back of your nose, it's eight centimeters from your nostril. So in fact, it needs to be big before you get symptoms, or unless it's spread, or unless you start to get, you know, uh, diffusion in the middle ear, which causes hearing loss. Otherwise, it's asymptomatic, and people don't know about it. And what we uh, want to know is, in fact, if we can detect this early, uh, meaning if we can find the patients who are only in stage one cancer, rather than having spread or you know, having lymph node in there, which is already a stage three, uh, then the prognosis is much better. So that's the reason we have screening tests in Hong Kong. Now, currently we do uh, EBV serology, so we do plasma DNA of the EBV, 
And now we have this MP screen, which is a, non, a, a slightly invasive, however, simple test. Uh, and then the gold standard at the moment is still a nasal endoscopy plus a minus endoscopic biopsy. So these are the current uh, tests and investigations that we do uh, to confirm. And then of course if it's confirmed then we'll do an MRI to check the extent and maybe a PET scan to check uh, staging. Now, so all this actually started from uh, Toronto. Um, it sort of uh, identified that in terms of EBV, it's actually the genome of the EBV inserted into these damaged cells in the nasal pharynx. Um, and so this is how it came about that we all do serology tests and so on. However, you notice that this EBV serology test is not actually done overseas because it's way too common to see EBV infections. And the yield of people having nasopharyngeal cancer is low. So therefore, you get a lot more uh, false positives. But in Hong Kong, because it's the most commonest in the world, uh, so that's why in Hong Kong we do this serology test. I mean, if you do this in New York, you'll find probably uh, there will be, out of 100 people who is positive, probably not even one will be have nasopharyngeal cancer. Now, so in 99, in fact, they uh, decided that, well, maybe in fact we should do something to collect cells from the nasopharynx to check for EBV. Um, and this is you know, how things start. Um, basically, uh, in short, is the nasopharynx epithelium. Uh, usually there's some sort of change in the cells, plus EBV infection where the genome is inserted into the cells. And this is, then it becomes nasopharyngeal cancer. This is sort of the model that we think is how uh, nasopharyngeal cancer is started. Um, so this started probably about 12 years ago in regards to uh, getting uh, the idea of having uh, uh, some sort of uh, smear available, a brush. And so this is similar to basically doing a pap smear, except in a different area. Um, having FDA approvals, having protocols, and you know, ethics committee approval trial. And of course, nowadays, you need multi-center prospective trial to be approved. So this is why it took 12 years to get started to do this project. Uh, now, they thought about doing it through the nose, but in the end, they found in fact, doing it through the mouth is much easier, in fact, for the patient, because our nasal septum could be deviated, people could have enlarged inferior turbinates because of uh, allergic rhinitis, other reasons. Um, and so, in fact, it's much easier for a patient to open their mouth because you can see the back of the mouth. It is just behind the soft palate. So then they have to you know, do different types. And in fact, they decided to invent something a bit like a hockey stick looking brush to put in the mouth where you just turn and then it will be at the back of the nasal palate. And basically, it's been like this. This is the brush where it's like a hockey stick. And when you put it in the mouth sideways, and once you reach the back of the palate, you turn it up towards upwards, and then it will be touching the back of the nasal pharynx. So that's the simple idea. And this is under electron microscope, is what the brush looks like. Uh, it's very similar to um, just a pap smear brush. So the slight difference is that because there's a lot of saliva, there's lots of mucus, other things in the back of the nose, um, they decide, you know, I think they've had more than 10 different types of brush, and they just did lots of, you know, experiments, and uh, they find so far this is the best one they've come across, and they're still doing further developments. And uh, so this is what it looks like, you know, uh, without cells, and once after brushing with some cells that gets in the crevices, that's how you collect cells. And the idea is you need at least 100 cells for them to be able to do a PCR to find out whether there is actual uh, EBV associated with the cells. Now, they think that the brush itself will get thousands of cells just by doing a few brushes. Um, <clears throat> so then subsequently they have to organize a lab to do the actual PCR uh, test. And you know, it needs to be FDA approved and all the regulatory um, process. Um, so it's 
basically PCI, they've got different products and probes. So we won't go into the details of those. But basically, is to amplify the cells and, uh, and then to detect with this EVP important. Uh, now, they actually put it into a solution because now this is, the lab currently is still only done in the US. So there's no lab in Hong Kong that would do it uh, at the moment because of patent and other issues. Um, so what they do is we do the actual smear through the mouth and then we actually snip off the, the head of, this, of the smear and we put it into a solution. And then basically they will collect it, they get FedEx to US and you get a result in about five or seven days. And it's all web-based, you have your login and everyone, and you got all your past results and you can monitor progression so um, they have had multiple studies, there was preliminary studies, and subsequently then uh, University of Toronto at the Royal Victoria Hospital, associated with Primary Hospital, Queen Elizabeth Hospital, and the lab of Primex, where they have been organizing this. And so last week they just did finish that prospective study with uh, at least 600 patients, and, uh, and so it was published, and so there's been a lot of publicity in the last week about this particular test and it's sort of formally launched uh, in Hong Kong. Um, so they've done multiple trials. The first one had 300 odd patients, uh, second trial 240 odd patients. Um, they're planning to do a further trial with more than 10,000 patients because it's a screening test so you need lots and lots of patients uh, for the power of the study to be effective. Um, so this is ongoing trials. Um, so it is uh, in Canada and the US is available already um, and now it's available in Hong Kong. So it's going to be expanded to other countries and so on. Now, so we're just going to briefly talk about what we actually do. So basically, this is, you know, if you are looking in the, can we turn this light off? So we can actually see the oral cavity. Basically, if you can see the back of the mouth, you can see the back of the uvula. Uh, so this is basically a side view of what we're actually going to see. So we can actually see when we look inside the mouth. What we want is the probe to go underneath the soft palate here, and then you turn it up and then it will be pointing up towards the nasal pharynx. So this is looking in the mouth, this is the probe, and as we put further towards the back, we go slightly just behind the soft palate uvula, and then we advance it up a little bit and basically we just touch the back of the nasal pharynx and that's it. So that's basically what we're going to do. And when we do this, we actually, once we touch the back, we actually just brush a few times and that's it. And then we take it back out. And there's a little um, container that we actually put the tip of the brush, so basically just the tip of the brush, we put it into the solution, we snip it off, and just close the lid, that's it. And there's a bit of paperwork, unfortunately. So this is basically what we do. We do we can do the sample just in the office. All we need to do is basically, if they have um, any suggestion that there's family history, for, that they should do a screening test, then this is all you do. Um, we put it into the collection uh, little capsule and then there's a bit of form to fill in on the computer and so on. You print out, you sign your, every doctor will have a code and so on. We, and again, it's shipped to the US and they do a PCR test and then they will actually, the report is all computer based, work based. So you have your login, you have your access and all that to actually retrieve the answer. So um, PCR have the amplification of many copies, and so they do it 35 times, so there will be many copies, and then they actually check in terms of how many of the EVDs actually around. This is basically what they do for this uh, Now, in terms of the test, it seems to be a good test because of specificity, because you don't want any false negatives, really. Um, so, 
in regards to numbers, it is actually very effective. Everything is more than 96%. Uh, now, so in the most recent test uh, paper being published, which is this paper, which will be available shortly, uh, through the American Academy of uh, Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. They had 600 patients done. And so what they did was they compared, so all the patients actually had a nasal endoscopy uh, and also an MP3 test. So they had compared the difference. Uh, they actually found that out of 600 patients, there were five cases that looked normal, but actually came back as positive from the MP3. And subsequent follow-up did show that those patients actually did develop nasopharyngeal cancer at a later stage. So, um, of course, you know, smaller tumors is easy to find typically both with nasal endoscopy and with the screening test. Um, so this is what they actually found because of they had five cases of false negative in nasal endoscopy, so it actually made it more sensitive and more specific in terms for uh, MP3. But of course, we need a lot more data to see the actual accuracy of, of this. Um, so, out of the 600 patients, they actually classified they had different patients of um, T1, T2, T3, and T4 stages of cancer. Um, of course, they only had the false negative in terms of for the uh, submucosal type, which was too early to detect on the nasal endoscope. So then still one of the uh, problems we have is very early we can't see it. But often we, we do see even early cancers, but um, in this case series they actually found a few that they could detect with MP3 but not with uh, nasal endoscope. <coughs> So uh, they talk about the benefit of, uh, of the MP screen. Um, uh, scopes and biopsy is expensive. There's pathology costs and other things. So in theory, this should be cheaper. Um, everyone can should be able to do an MP screen test. You don't need specialists with scopes available. As you know, endoscopes are expensive, uh, and so all these things helps to be a better screening test, because screening test should be able to be readily available and easily done. Um, it is not as invasive as doing nasal endoscopes, um, and it's easy for everyone to be able to do. So the time that we do do MP screen is basically for screening. So anyone who has family history, uh, worried, or if they have a serology test that su suggests it's positive, that is the times that we actually would suggest that you do a, a, a test for screening. Um, so we briefly talked about that. Um, so they also compared to a serology test and actually even the DNA test in the blood. Um, so of course we find that this is a lot more sensitive and specific. Um, as we all know, we've seen many patients who have a EBV serology test all come back positive. We have a look with a nasoendoscope, a lot of them is negative, they don't have family history of it. So, you know, if you have glandular fever, it will come back positive. So, pretty much, uh, that's the problem with EBV serology. Um, so, we find that this is going to be quite a good test that is easily done for most patients uh, and it could be done in the office. And so um, I think it's, it is a better test than the actual blood test we have at the moment, uh, but it is a different skill set in terms of what we need to do. Um, so basically this is the stage in terms of where we detect. Um, so normally, um, when there is change into the change of EVP change in the nasopharynx. So this is when the MP screen will start to show up. Is when you can see the actual inserted EVP DNA into the nasopharyngeal cells. So this is very early in this piece. 
when you have multiple nasopharyngeal cancer cells, where immunoglobulin starts to become positive, it's further down the track. And then for blood DNA, then this is actually a measure of how much is actually in the blood, it's cholesterol and so on. So this is a different spectrum of when you would start to see it. Um, even up to this stage, it can still be a T1 blood cancer. It doesn't necessarily mean when you have EBV DNA in the blood, it doesn't mean it has metastasized, but at least this is a time when you can detect it. And this is how one of the ways in fact we measure people if they have recurrence and so on. In the last you know five years or so, we actually measure the EBV DNA content in the blood to, to monitor for recurrence and so on. Uh, again, to similar in terms of how uh, how the cells change and then spread the testicides. Uh, now, in terms of complication of this particular smear test, we do it through the mouth. Uh, haven't really seen any um, major problems in terms of bleeding, um, severe reaction because it's quite a, just a little swab in the mouth, pretty much. Um, people do gag sometimes. And not everyone, you know, to be honest, not everyone will be able to have this performed because if they're very sensitive, wouldn't they use a tongue depressor and so on? But there are different techniques will get help. You know, the key is they are relaxed; they don't stick the tongue out, uh, which will demonstrate shortly. Um, and I think that's you know simple enough to talk about what it is. I think if we can see what we do as much as. So any questions so far you want to ask about the test or what we do? So David, in your practice in yes. your clinic, you'll introduce this now as an alternative to clinical examination? Uh, so what we do um, at the moment is if there's family history of nasopharyngeal cancer, we first of the counsel them that there's a much increased risk of uh, blood-related relatives having nasopharyngeal cancer. And so we would suggest now this is the one of the, the latest tests in terms to do a screening test. Yeah. So some patients would want an uh, endoscope done if they want to see. Um, so you know, if they request that, then we will show them. If they're happy to just do a screening test, then we'll just do this. So in our health screening, we could follow the same pathway. Exactly. So in theory, this should be an early detection, right. and there should be less false, uh, false positive or false negative. Right. Yeah. And this test doesn't require a lot of counseling. No, because it's just a screening test. So, uh, well, well, it's just like if you do the blood test, it's the same. So, it depends on how much counseling you do for your blood test too, because it's actually looking for the same thing. Yeah. You say in the case of uh, false positive. Um, so far, we haven't seen much, uh, much well, because it's only been around for a very short time. Um, if there are, if it, actually we see anyone who has had problems, um, in fact, sometimes we do repeat it, we just have blood tests at all. Um, but we haven't seen any calls possible. Well, it, unfortunately, it is a lot more expensive because it's shipped across uh, and it's a new test. Um, so currently, um, I think the cost to patients is about two thousand dollars for doing this. Thing. So we might um, actually do the actual. So we'll actually. Sorry, can I just one? David, in normal patients, you wouldn't use your cytokine. 
Uh, so you you, uh, you can. It depends on how well they tolerate in terms of how So you so first of all, so we actually don't use a headlight sort of thing to open them up. So first of all, just open the so we can see in fact look in the mouth, you can see the easy thing is they should just open the mouth, but not to stick a tongue out. Okay? That's often the perception people always stick a tongue out. But the key is if you can just open the mouth and just get them say so that's actually <laughs> easier to see. You can see the whole of the palette. And so it allows much easier uh, applying of the actual swaps, okay? Alright, so this is the brush. So this is the brush. There's actually samples that you guys can have a touch and feel and see. So all we need to do is so we Somebody come and collect it. 
and he kept standing on the FedEx for 24 hours on so his flight to, uh, to the US. And usually, uh, when you look on the screen, I've had them back before five days. And what actually happened is they'll actually say you've received the process and so on. So on the screen. You can just log on to the website, they actually you actually see that. Can I ask one question just for practical reasons? Yeah. For people coming in and you do the test, and it comes back negative, uh, would you not also create an error score or you just have the file? Uh, so at the moment, um, of the patients that I've seen, uh, because they are usually family that has uh, family history of it, and uh, there's some of the patients that have been following up you know, for a few years, and uh, those people in fact, I just do sort of, so you, I used to just do a serology blood test for them, and, and I don't look anymore, unless they have problems and so on. Maybe in a few years they say, have a little more, but generally we don't do the review. Yeah. And so with this, we just do a, just a smear test. But is it like a pap smear, you'd say, come back yes. in three years? Or well, more? so if, if you do have family history, then you should do it once a year. Yeah. And some of them that do came back positive, and you look, and you can't see anything, some of them, in fact, in the study, they, they looked at it in three months again. They repeated the test because they couldn't see anything, but it came back positive. And in fact, uh, those were the five patients that, in fact, that it did show that it was actually NBC, but they just couldn't see it. Therefore, each of the patients you suggested uh, this test to uh, That's a good question. Um, I haven't done any on kids, okay? Uh, but in theory, uh, because the size of this, there's only one size. So it is a little large for probably um, seven year olds and below would be difficult, I think, to do this because of the size of the, uh, of the smear and stick. Um, but certainly, you know, 10 years old, it's not a huge problem. Yeah. So, um, they actually have samples of the actual. Um, a model for people to try, it. and in fact, I got you know the, the actual uh, smear sticks for you to actually have a feel of what it's like. Yeah. 